Hello, привет, welcome to the Skating Lessons preview of the 2022 Olympic Winter Games here on YouTube. <laughs> I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave, it's getting serious. Final it's stress. getting serious. This, 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 and that. For those of you who are new here, we're going to be discussing everything going on in the figure skating world in a week up to the 2022 Olympics. And we know damn well that as soon as we record this, there is going to be news breaking. People are going to arrive. People are going to test positive. We may need to come on screen or do a million as the blade turns or whatnot. But people, you are asking for it. And of course we were going to do it. I don't know why of I needed course. to get 70 text messages asking if we were going to do a show that we've done a show every week. Since Why this would be the first Sunday in a million years we wouldn't film something. Yes. Except for <laughs> during the um, the uh, coronavirus, when people said, well, can you do a show? And I said, tell me, please, what happened this week? The entire world shut down. What would you like us to talk about? Would you like us to look at each other? <laughs> and often we did and talk about anything there was to talk about. We, as soon as there was yes. something to talk about, we came back. You know, that was that was the thing. But yes, there was nothing to talk about. There were rumors of who was skating. And that was about it. There was nothing to say. So yeah. And now there's plenty to say. I think so it was a sad not, time for everyone. Say. Yeah. But yes. So uh, for those of you who are new here, please subscribe below, smash that like button, leave tons of comments about your team. We are going to discuss, we're going to open with the team lineups. You've all asked it. I've seen a million one comments. People have even left this on my personal Instagram. Dave, wh what's the lineup for the team event? Do we know the US team? Do we know the Russian team? The thing is we don't know officially. We know proposed perhaps thoughts or their murmurings, but the number one thing is that the athletes have to get into China. So until someone is cleared, doesn't mean a hill nothing is official right? yeah. yeah because in this in this iteration and i don't know if this was always the rule we the the country's federations do not have to put up the team event selections until 24 hours before the event begins is that correct yeah yeah so i mean and knowing some federations are probably going to wait one to see who's allowed to get in and two who's doing what once they arrive Oh, I mean, Russia is very curious about which USA men are doing it. And I mean, everyone's yeah. curious about what I think for the US, they know that they don't have a, a real clear shot at the gold medal. But I think uh, getting a silver uh, would be important for the US, although Japan certainly has an opportunity to do that. But we did our lineups of what we think they will do and what we think they should do. So you can get mad at us either or. But just remember, there's what we think that will happen and what we think and what we would should choose. happen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's Knowing start. just to reiterate for everyone, mm -hmm. the team event, you can have two disciplines that have two entries, yes. and you are allowed two disciplines with one entry. Now, but having said that, you could everyone, technically have all four with just one entry, correct? Yes, and everyone can sit in the kiss and cry. You can all get on TV time and be very egalitarian, but those other people do not get a medal. Right. And in some countries, there are bonuses for coaches who coach an Olympic champion. And there is power to be had. So let's talk about what we think they will do. Uh, the most important thing uh, to note um, before we do this, Mikhail Kolyada is out uh, because of COVID. And Way we'll to remind me, Dave. Oh, we'll have a bigger discussion about that. You know, there have been a million and one conspiracy theories about this. You know, there was a lot of uh, internal uh, discussions being had about that team event lineup. If they trusted Kolyada, if, if Mark Kudradiuk was the way to go, um, I I think that I don't know. There's so much. I've heard a million and one conspiracy theories from all over the world about Kolyada, from Russians themselves writing to us, from everyone has an opinion about how come he was pulled out um, with COVID days ago, even though he could have potentially been cleared for the individual event, and yet. Danny G allegedly tested positive for COVID, also in But Brazil. we just decided that one's a negative, a false, a false positive. And he's going. Right? I think that yeah. is the bigger thing here. Um, they've been, the, the Russian skating press has been very down on Kolyada this season. And now that Mark is boosted, perhaps they don't feel that he is the strongest. I think you always have to wonder too, with an athlete, can, if they were sick, and depending on how sick they are, could their training get back up? Because you're losing stamina, you're losing training time, and you, you know the confidence. So perhaps that 
played in or not to whether or not he would be there. But just an interesting thing. There are many people who feel perhaps they didn't think he was the psychologically strongest. We don't know. We're never gonna know until uh, right. in. I think it's it's hard, but I th still think he's the best Russian man out there. Um, yes, yeah. in least... overall quality, to me, he of course is the cream of the crop that way. But but there is something to it. Can you deliver it under these circumstances? So I think for someone like Kolyada, you would think that his strength would maybe be in the short program as opposed to the free with consistency. Although he tends to skate the free, like the free was better for him at nationals. So without uh, him performing at the Europeans, we don't know. Uh, as it is listed officially, he had some sort of an injury before Europeans and then COVID. There are some who think maybe he had COVID before Europeans and we didn't know. Who knows? But at the same, right. if you're going by the official reasons, injury before Europeans, COVID, perhaps, you know, the higher ups in the Federation didn't think that he was prepared enough with back-to-back -back loss of training time. That's also a very real possibility. So. And just in general, like as we sort of talk about our team selections that we've made versus what the, the federations may have done. Um, when I have a situation where a skater like a Koliada is inconsistent, but maybe some of the other guys that I could insert are also going to be inconsistent, I find myself erring on the side of international PCS. As, as sort of like a, a tiebreaker for me. Now, Mark has proven he's scoring higher and not no longer like should be viewed perhaps as the inconsistent skater. But um, when we talk about other teams, for sure, when it seems like it could go either way technically and who can actually deliver the goods on the night, if it's a toss up, I'm going with who I think the judges consistently like more from a PCS standpoint. So having followed skating, gymnastics, NCAA gymnastics, you have to go with scoring potential, but you have to balance it with consistency. And I think that right. that is the best strategy. You have to go with who has the look, which people hate to talk about. Like I think in terms of figure skating, the look means your GOE and or your components. Uh, I think that, you know, that's kind of the difference of when you look at the potential of a Jameson Radford versus um, Walsh uh, and Michaud, you know, that's kind of the difference. What is the scoring potential for, and the consistency that we're looking at? And you kind of make those educated decisions. There's no- and Also assuming, that. like, do you, I would imagine the federations, if they have a golden child on their team, will let that skater and their team weigh in on which portion of the team event may help them, may sure. hinder them. You know, I think there's a lot of behind the scenes opinions as each athlete, like if you were a man going into the, mm -hmm. the Olympics, Dave, would you want to compete in the team event knowing that you have such a fast turnaround? In the short program, yes. In the yes, free program, exactly. no. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's important here. Um, also, the important thing to note is that this year, the Olympic schedule is going to be flipped so that the pairs go last. This is, uh, listen, I don't like change. I have never, <laughs> <laughs> I like tradition. However, it is what it is. I didn't decide it. Um, it's suspected that perhaps it's because it's the best discipline uh, for the Chinese figure skaters that the pairs are going last. I don't even like when they change the schedule of the Grand Prix, uh, but uh, alas, it is what it is. And because of that, it does throw a wrench in it for the men. Um, right. Last time we did see many pairs do both portions of the team event and still compete. Uh, do Hamill and Radford did do that. And it worked out uh, very well for them. Many other people, you know, perhaps would not, um, you know, with the men. Yeah, it's five. that question. Does it give you more time on Olympic ice to work out the kinks? You know what I mean? To get more comfortable, to get more, you know, stage time, if you will. Or like a Lipnitskaya, or quite frankly, even Marai, are you going to put all your eggs and peak too soon? You, you just never know. I and think as an athlete, I would like the idea of, of kind of testing the waters in the team event, but not having to do the full event. Uh, I also think that in the dance, the top teams have traditionally done both portions of the event. Uh, we saw that um, in 2014. Um, we saw that with Davis and White, uh, with Virtue and Moyer. They both did both portions of the event. Uh, and Virtue and Moyer also did both portions of the event uh, at the 2018 Olympics. It certainly uh, gives you time with the judges. 
It also prevents your competitors from getting any leg up on you, especially if uh, they are in um, the uh, individual, uh, you know, if they are on your team uh, and in the individual event. So many people are, I'm getting messages that Nathan's in some video with Sarah Kawahara's daughter. Nathan is doing the most right now. He had quite a Vogue photo shoot thing come out. You know what? The, Fashion, I, never Nathan. I'm all for couture. Yeah, I don't know about that. And the Jurassic Park moment with, I was like, what is it? You know what? Make, make that money. Park you make it. Tanya. Tanya At least, okay. I feel like I'm still seeing those tire commercials with Nathan and Ashley from the last Olympics that we would see during every single break. They aired them so many times. So I hope Correct. they got paid uh, per airing, uh, how that works with residual. Correct. Correct. So, so we, we think there are kind of four countries in the mix, right, for the medals here. Canada, yeah. Russia, US, and Japan. Megan Duhamel doesn't think that Canada is going to make the free at this point in time. We are hearing that Keegan Messing has not gotten on the plane yet. I've heard that from two sources that he did not get on the plane. To he go. wasn't in their official photo, to be fair. They did post a photo where they had clearly all chartered the first class section. Good for you, Canada. Um, and it, uh, we did not see Keegan. Roman was the only, only, only man on that flight. And, and Piper and Paul early. were the only dance team on that flight. I want to get there early to acclimate. Remember, the earlier you get with a big time change, the better. We call that the Tanya. Tanya, the 92 Tanya. Olympics, right? Yeah. This was <laughs> not smart when she was potentially jet lagged um, at the Olympics. It right. was not the best. And they did that to stay home and train. And in this case, I think there are people who remember in certain countries. So to test and get on a plane, each country has their own COVID protocol, but they also have to have documentation because if anything shows up in your system, you have to go to a committee in China to show that, uh, that you have had a series of negative tests because perhaps you could have COVID that was in your system from before. This is why they have certain thresholds that we're reading about now. Um, and you wanna have that backed up documentation. I was talking to a coach earlier who is now trying to fly out on Tuesday because COVID had showed up in the system. So they have to do so many tests before to see if uh, you, know, you can get on that flight. It's also very difficult to get a flight to China from certain countries right now because things are so locked down. So if you weren't on the official flight, it is uh, harder. And then once you get to China, if you test positive in that test off the plane, you get quarantined for 14 days and people say things about the, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Jonathan, if Danny G gets put in quarantine, the jokes will write themselves. Okay, Correct. I have not seen someone that the entire world thinks is so arrogant, so no. distasteful. In some ways, I think people prefer a Terry with all of her outrageous quotes, perhaps, you know, remember being harsh. I think, I think most people are better with a Terry than they are with the deal Glickenhaus for whatever reason, they just say no. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. where we draw the line. Yeah. That is where we draw yeah. the line, okay? Yeah. All right, let's go for what we think Russia will do. Oh, also, what? one thing I wanted to say, remember, reminder here, the team event points, the short program has maximum 10 entries, so 10 different countries. After the short program, it's sliced in half, and then there are five entries. So... The short program is more competitive and there can be more of a variance. Someone could finish eighth, like a Jeremy Abbott situation when he bombed the short program. I don't remember if he finished eighth or what, I'm just saying yada, yada, right? Way out of whack, you, yeah. You could finish way out of whack when your country is getting a bronze medal, but you could have to carry um, you know, that uh, you know, deficit. That being said, the short program becomes almost more important uh, in this competition. The, in the free, the worst you can do is uh, fifth. So there's almost not a bad choice. Uh, and are they still doing it where like, if you win the short program, then you are awarded 10 points and then nine, eight and so on? I believe so, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. You get maximum points if you win. I believe it's 10, but yes, this is- the Okay. Best so, okay. What I think Russia will do. What about your list? Girl. Oh, are we doing it together? Yes. We're doing it. Okay. So so I have, who do you have for dance? Dance, I have yeah. Nikki and Nikki doing both, Sinitsin and Katsalapov. I think they, Same. okay, and why? I think 
back injury, no back injury. I think they will put whatever they need to in his back so that they can make sure that they beat the Montreal dance teams in both portions, not only right. to secure maximum points for Russia, but to secure at least a silver medal in the individual event and make sure that they don't get too much momentum. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, pairs. Pairs. I think Mishin and Galyamov did the short. I believe that Terry has been campaigning, from what I have heard, to get Tarasova and Morozov in the free. And Remember, I think they've they've solidified themselves as two with the European. They have. Coaches. Yeah. But why do we have to split the pairs? Hmm. I don't because think there's a reason to split the pairs based on the results that we've seen this season. What I've seen is that Tarasova and Morozov started the season with potential, and then they've been more of a hot mess every time out. So if I'm the Federation, I think what I'm looking for is we're looking for the pairs team that can beat US, Canada, and Japan. And I think that's there, this, Galyamov. No problem. I think we're good even with them in a long program scenario where PCS can make up for it and one jumping error or something like that could go wrong, they still have time to make up for it. Yes. So I, I, I think they're still okay if they do the free. But I believe that this is a Russian power play. And I think there's two reasons to put them in. One, we're gonna split the ladies because Valjeva only wants to do one from what we have heard. They, don't, they want no repeats of a Yulia situation right. where she peaked in the team event. Okay, even though I think Valjeva, you would hope that she would do both because she is far and away the favorite for everything. <laughs> this season, she is the best in the free, she's the best in the short. Because Diana Davis could not be named to the team event based on her performance and did not place as well, this gets a third gold medal for a Terry in the team event. Mm -hmm. And it prevents a substitution here and it prevents Stepanova and Bukin, which is in the best interest of both Terry and Alexander Zhulin. For Alexander Zhulin, it keeps Sinitsa and Katsalapov the number one team, and it, it ensures their supremacy uh, as that dance team, and it keeps all the shine on him. And looking towards the future, whether Diana Davis stays with Igor Spielbond or would move to Alexander Zhulin, we see that it keeps them from being elevated. We don't want to elevate Stepanova and Bukin too high too often because we have to think about next year and the future and how high Diana Davis can rise. So you've got to keep Stepanova and Bukin out of that team event so that they are not named Olympic champions. But also, I think if you're the Russian Federation, you know, Stepanova Bukin, it's easy for judges to place Canada and the US ahead of them. Yes. But it's, it's not here. So even even if we didn't mind boosting Buchan, uh, I think you can't because I think you're going to lose points, you know, from Canada. I certainly think Canada. Russia will try to boost them in the individual. I just don't yes. know what is possible with that judging panel. Correct. Mark, I think you got to I do think both. the only choice. Yeah. The only choice. Yeah. Even yeah. though uh, Sports Roo has articles about, will Moselev do? Absolutely not. Absolutely no. No not. You go with Mark for both. He only accidentally got his shot at the Olympic thing because of Kolya does withdraw. Like, I well, mean, you differ. I would go with Sherbakova. And I think that they will go with Sherbakova for the free over Trusova. Now, wait, but this is your what you would do or what you think they'll do? No, what I think they will do. Yeah. So it's interesting. I think Trusova in the free, uh, listen, it's almost like they get to pick mm -hmm. because I don't see any woman beating a Russian woman in the team event. Uh, or the individual, unfortunately. But like, I think that Trusova has more scoring power in the free than Anna does. And I think Anna makes me more nervous about her longevity and freshness. Even though Trusova we know has been injured, I wonder if the Federation thinks Anna is more fragile. I actually think Trusova with the injury could be more fragile having to do how many quads, even though they're obviously gonna be training very hard, you don't get as many training sessions at the Olympics. It's actually almost a rest uh, compared to other practice sessions. I think Anna, if I had to, because if Alieva only wants to do the short, and I think she's the right choice for the short because she can do the triple axel and get the maximum points. And I don't think that there's 
another skater in the event that can beat Bogeva if she goes clean, and perhaps even if she makes a mistake in the short program, it would be very tough to beat her. Mm. Think. Anna has been stronger in the free all season. She has pulled herself out of so much when uh, she has been down. Uh, as we saw at Europeans, I tend to think with the team pressure on her, she will rise. Even though I like Trusova as a fighter, I tend to think she's been inconsistent at Europeans. We haven't seen her pull out all the quads since the beginning of the season. I don't trust her as much. Obviously she's not a bad choice if she's favored for an individual medal. I tend to think Anna's more mentally ready to deliver in the free than true Okay, Even makes total sense because Dave, it does- and The worst you can be is fifth. The worst you can be is fifth and they're not gonna be fifth. So- No, that, that's what but because remember right now, we just have to guarantee that if if in this version that I think the Federation may choose a Trusova is that she will definitely, even with all sorts of mistakes on the quads, still beat the American Canadian. Oh, and Shirakova has more endorsements, which I think also plays in. <laughs> so fair enough, fair enough. Because now as we segue into what I personally would do, I do include Anna. Okay, so the only difference I have is that I would have Mishina and Galyamov do both. To I me, thought about they are the Ali Raisman of Russian figure skating. They are not the number one in the world, but they are going to deliver. And they are gonna deliver every time out. I would still go with Mark for both. I would go to Nitsin and Kanselopov both just to make sure that they could win both events. And I would keep Valieva in the short and Anna in the free. Yeah, I would put Anna in, in the free because again, I, I don't, I'm worried about I think Trusova is more fragile mm -hmm. with, with the injury. Yeah. I wondered what they might do here because I think Mishina and Galyamov have the highest scoring potential overall. So, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna put them in the free because I also like the Tarasova Morozov short program better for them. I do, I'm program. just going for consistency, baby. I want no chances. If I'm in charge of the Russian Federation, I am feeling no the pressure of winning the gold medal. I want no gambles. And I'm sorry. Uh, have we really seen a federation have the guts to not offer the spot to someone? Yeah. Because or, like, in on. some of these, to me, Russia almost seems like it's their gold to lose. I it think is their gold to lose. Yeah. So, so it's almost like by saying we're not including you, it's almost like there's a free medal up for grabs and we just want to make sure you don't have it also. Because I no, think- I'm looking at the pressure. <laughs> I'm looking at this like the 90, like Alexander Alexandrov talked about why he took uh, Rosa Galgeva out of the all around the 92 Olympics to put in Tatiana Gutsu to go for the maximum, to go for the result. He feels pressure to win with the amount of money and that the, the Russian government puts behind sports and the amount of attention and importance that it has, I am going for gold. They are professionals, you know? It is amateurs competing against sports professionals in Olympic competition. Uh, we're going for gold and I'm sorry. You might be a Terry Tudbaridza, but Mishna Galyamov have delivered this season and Tarasova and Morozov have had an entire career of underachieving. And frankly, I'm taking no gambles in the individual event. Okay. I mean, in the team event, I'm taking no yeah. gambles. Yeah. Done. Zilina. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> We're getting Fair the gold enough. and screw you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody else. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Ross and Morozov, you at the <laughs> nationals, at the Europeans. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. How about what we think Team USA will do? Now, this As is based on when people we left and when we've seen people skating. So this is what yeah. I'm thinking it looks like. And I was a little surprised, actually. Um, your list, sir? Okay. All right. <laughs> so Yes, we have the same. Oh, wait, no, we don't. You, have Hubble, we're... you think that they're going to put Hubble and Donahue in both? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh. Now you think they're going to put chalk and Bates in both, but I I'm remembering also that Hubble. Listen, I think if you're the Federation, you know they're probably going to finish the same. Hubble and Donahue as the technical winners of the free dance, even though chalk and Bates won. 
I don't know. I'm sending, I think they're sending Hubble and Donahue. Okay. I think they're going to send Chuck and Bates. To me, they scored well. Merely because they have the title. I think they're stronger in the rhythm dance right now. They have the national title and they did well at NHK. I think Hubble and Donahue have made little errors at their Grand Prix assignment. Even though they are world medalists, I tend to think it's going to go Chuck and Bates. I tend to think you kind of ask the coaches in that situation, but uh, we're, we're, wait until we talk about what we will do. But I think well, because there's, there's also the ratings. question, if they're also thinking in dance about trying to make sure one of the US teams medals. Yeah. This is already, the team event is already the showdown between them and the Canadians. So yeah. I think like if Chalk and Bates finish behind Piper and Paul, or if Hubble and Donahue finish behind Piper and Paul in the team event, I find it hard to believe that the individual event will go a different way. Of course. So, so of course. It, you could also be protecting a dance team by From not Canada, throwing them in the mix yet. The, our, the other argument against splitting it is that Canada could put all of their money or political capital into that dance event. Right. And try to take out both American teams in the team event by beating, beating that Piper and Paul could beat them both, right? right. That is the opportunity there. However, I, I believe that we are going to split the ladies and I don't see, I don't agree with it. I think that Tammy Gamble moved to Colorado and that she's Karen's coach. And we saw how her skaters were judged at the US nationals and they were judged very favorably. And I think that she's put in a lot of years of yeoman service and US figure skating and that they're gonna give one of her athletes a medal that they've invested in that amount of time. And I think it's, it becomes the coaches. When I look at it, I see Karen, Tammy, Mariah, Roth, Nathan, Roth, Vincent, Tom Z. That's what I see almost there. You're giving Roth two, uh, Tammy and Tom each get one. Um, right. Mino and Sand are represented and Marie France is represented. And I think that that's kind of mm, maybe favoritism among uh, US figure skating right now. Um, but quite frankly, with the ladies, like to me, it seemed clear Alyssa is not a viable option for either program at this point. I don't believe so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I also don't really understand, and we're going to talk about this. Uh, so Kinnearum and Frazier have a higher international score this season by like 0.2, even 0.18. Yeah. You know, like basically a tie. Yeah. But that was before nationals. We were both there. Kinnearum and Frazier withdrew and Kane and Leduc performed clean. To me, that makes up the 0.18. Yes, it does. Ethically. Do, Ethically. And we'll talk this about is it nothing when we get to about, our lists. Yeah. This is nothing about like who I prefer, or but if I look at those results when it's that close in terms of a season best score, and the one team did really well at nationals and the other didn't compete, ethically, I have to go with the other team. That's just what I think it's not about who I like or who I maybe think is better. I actually don't think it really matters which one competes. I think that they both could finish about the same in those fields. Betting on who skates well that day. Um, so what I would do is this. I know that it's a problem that Paper and Paul could take out both dance teams, but I would have Chalk and Bates do the rhythm dance because I thought it was so much, it was stronger. And I think it's more pressure and I worry about Hubble and Donahue. I would have Hubble and Donahue do the free so that Marie Franz doesn't have to deal with a mutiny at Yeah, the... here, wait, I, I'm gonna clarify because you're doing a good and job. Also, clarifying. after watching On Edge, I think everyone wants Hubble and Donahue to just get a medal so they leave. Okay, they are so <laughs> difficult if you have watched On Edge. Okay. okay. Um, Nathan Short, Vincent Free, even over you're putting Jason in for the free. I debated No, it. no, Jason in for the short. You think Nathan's gonna wanna do the free so close to his individual event? No, this is a part of me pretending that Nathan can do the free. And what uh, is, you've been hearing that he has some sort of hip injury. I just, how many times you wanna do those quads? That many times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the only thing is to me, if I'm including Jason, mm -hmm. I kind of need Jason to do the short. Just because you uh, like I, it? 
No, well, yes, because I like it, but also Jason's, um, the, given the limited amount of jumping passes, it sort of evens out a little bit more than it Doesn't it also even program. out what Vincent could do in the short? Because Vincent has been strong in the short program. Many felt that he deserved to win the short program at nationals and that Nathan was maybe held up slightly. Mm. If I were to, here's a, there's just more variance in the short program with guys doing quads. Now, Nathan's component scores and his GOE are going to keep him in it and score high enough in the short. But if it's close and Morris from Georgia skates well, and we see that Mark Kondratiuk scores by being Russian champion, European champion, he does a clean short program. His score with that amount of politics behind him from Russia, I just watched meddling. I think he's going to be uh, scored pretty high. I worry about Jason in that field. Interesting. Well, even with a Kevin, if he randomly can deliver, or Keegan, if he can randomly deliver. I believe Kevin I has just, injuries he's managing, but skating well, but yeah. I but, just, yeah, I just felt like if we were to include Jason, I don't know how we do it, unless it's the short. But like you're saying- Why would we put Jason in? I mean, technically, he's the third man on the team. And, and has, has a team medal. All these men have team medals, right? Did Vincent? Vincent does yeah. not. Vincent Vin does not. Oh, that's right. It was Adam, not Vincent. Yeah. Okay. I think with Vincent, I'm just looking at it this way. I would prefer to have Vincent do the short and Nathan do the free, but I think Nathan's preference wins out. Maybe Nathan doesn't want to do the short. Maybe he wants to do the free. In that case, that's an easier scenario here. But looking at resting the body and everything like that, I tend to think that Nathan would just go for it in the short program. <laughs> It's also a potentially a showdown with Yuzuru Hanyu in the short program. Um, I, I, yeah, I, because I would think your guess at each federation is kind of having to anticipate the other federation's showdowns. I mean, that's the thing. You almost just want somebody to come forward so you can all start making decisions based on- I start like, to worry about in the free, I'm not worried about Russia. I'm worried about Japan. Mm. I think that Vincent's quads become more important to potentially beat Japan because he's mm. got a higher scoring potential, even though Jason could go clean, but if he goes clean with no quads and Yuma Kakiyama does plenty of quads, that becomes harder. And what if Mark right. then outscores Jason? Right. So I am praying three times, crossing myself, spinning around, spitting, <laughs> lighting some sage and saying, Vincent, please don't repeat nationals. Please repeat Skate America at the team event at the Olympics. <laughs> and you will yeah. never have to listen to your mother talk about skating again. And that is what I am doing, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And I am Jason Brown, the team captain and have him have some sort of a role where he is in charge of pep talks and strategy and, give, and doing interviews with Andrea Joyce from the team box or outside right. of the team box and asking him to be some sort of a role for that based on his personality. And that is what I'm doing. And I am putting Kane LaDuke in. I'm sorry, Alexa, but you didn't get to compete at nationals and they did. And we, um, we know that's unfortunate and not her fault, but yes, I, I'm sort of with you on that. Like it's the, it's the more ethical thing to do, I would think. Again, given that they were You're going so Karen close. over Mariba? Jonathan, you and Karen Chen, okay. Here's the thing, Mariah Bell yeah. delivered at the Nationals. Whether you think it was great or not, she won. Karen did not. She did win, yes. How many triples do you believe Stevie Wonder thinks that Karen rotated at the US Nationals? <laughs> well, I mean, it, what was interesting at US Nationals is when in like the short, they did go in on Karen, but not on Mariah. Where there, Karen goes to Cornell. Cameras. She knows what a 1080 is, okay? I mean, I was just, it looked, Mariah was looking as under rotated to me. And again, in this instance, Mariah had sort of like some okayish outings at the last, but I'm still, I still view her as a liability. And I just know judges will go PCS for Karen over Mariah. Now, we also know- What if Shinamata were to be a caller? Then they're both screwed. <laughs> then it doesn't matter. All three screwed. of our ladies are screwed. I'm then. most worried, and this is why, I think they'll do this. I think if Mariah Bell goes for the triple-triple in the short, she's more likely to fall. 
Karen's more likely just to under rotate than triple triple in the fall. Yeah, or triple double. I mean, quite frankly, yeah. 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 So, but let's talk about this because now that now that Keegan is maybe there, maybe not, that would mean Roman Sadovsky would do the team event. For Canada. which would change a lot, I think. Yes. For Japan's chances. We don't know. Keegan could still go, but I tend to think if he's not there yet, based on how Canada plays the game, I I think you've got Matty Skeezus doing both. You've got Piper and Paul definitely doing both. You have, um, because they need those points. Oh, okay. Yeah, that I've heard that KMT is doing the short and that if they qualify for the free, it would likely be James and Radford. I think we're in agreement, but I think that that just becomes Roman instead of Keegan. That's what I- Yeah, yeah given, given an actual logistical- Now let's talk reason. about Japan. <clears throat> in the strategy. I think that this is a fan favorite team. Even though we are American, my love of figure skating makes it a real Sophie's choice because yes, the Olympics brings out patriotism in everyone. However, a love of skating and of these star power and of seeing, loving an underdog and Japan feels like the underdog. Um, right. right. You know, um, so I have, here, wait, I'm quickly doing this. Well, I, I don't have love two Wakaba, different lists. Right? I need to ask you, Wakaba has a triple axel, right? Yes. Do they like her enough to trust to put her in the short program at the team event in the Olympics with a medal on the line? Not if she is going to attempt the triple axel in the short. Yeah, I- Does that I, make sense? So I, I am putting what I think they'll do versus what I want to do. Let's, let's say this is what I think they'll do. Okay, so Mira and Kihara obviously doing both. Yes. That's maximum points. I think King Yuzuru Hanyu, short program. Mm -hmm. If he feels, okay, this is where I think. If Yuzu feels that he can win the individual, I think he will only do the short program. If Yuzu feels that he has the potential to maybe not win the individual, but to get Japan's team the best result, I think he'll do both. Mm, interesting. Him not listing a coach scares me. Because if I were Yuzu's coach, I would say, you are not doing that quad axle outside of the exhibition. I don't care right. if you do 20 attempts in the exhibition. You do that quad loop first, you get maximum GOE and you go for the gold, okay? Yeah. Nathan has the pressure of the US media and the world on him. And frankly, even though you're the two-time Olympic champion, in many respects, it feels like Yuzuru Hanyu is somewhat the underdog coming in here, right? He's yeah. the veteran, but he hasn't won the last three world champion. He hasn't won the last three world championships. I think it, it, it seems like more pressure is on Nathan Chen. He also has to, you know, deal with the demons from four years ago. Right. You think so? Well, but what's interesting is like, do, I'm intrigued because the only thing that changes from what I think they will do and what I would do, well, I shouldn't have used them orange marker on this color um i want shoma in it instead of yoma or yuma excuse me um yuma even though at times can do better than shoma i don't know i still trust shoma on this stage just a smidge more because yuma is still working out the kinks and i want yuma to have a positive um experience in the individual yeah i think i think i put Calvary in the short program because I'm worried about Wakaba's axle. So I can say, yeah, go for it in the free skate. But I don't want to, one, tell her to just try the double axle in the short, but I also don't want to risk the triple. Um, now, what about, okay. So I, I have Hanyu in the short for both. And then okay. I switch it up. This is what Shoma you think they will do or what you would do? This is what I think they'll do, because I think they'll include Yuma instead of Shoma, and I would include Shoma instead of Yuma. I don't know if, I don't even know. I think I have the same for both on what I think they will do and what I... Because you don't have Shoma in the mix. 
I'm going head. I'm not going heart. I'm going head here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to, and I'm going to say that Hanyu has come to sanity and is not going to do the quad axle. This is what I'm betting this on and that he's going to go for the okay. individual. Okay. She's my girl. I do not believe Japan. Can you bring it a little closer? I do not believe Japan is going to put Wakaba in the team event. Yeah. Okay. I think they could, but I don't think they I need think to. And I think they're, they just trust Kauri. Yeah. Just based on how the politics have gone in Japan over the last years. Don't shoot the messenger. I want Wakaba to do that Lion King in the free, and that's where I would put her. But I almost think Calvary's a slam dunk. What's she gonna get? A second, either way. Like, come on, I, you're not gonna beat I the rest. I feel like even if Wakaba misses the triple X, so let's say in the Lion King, I still see her finishing head of the um, American and Canadian entry. I don't think either Japanese lady is gonna beat the Russian entry in the individual. No. no. So but now I the goal trust, is who's going to beat the U.S. and Canada? I think they're going to go with Calgary for both. Okay. okay. I think they just love her. Yeah. I think they freaking love her. Well, I think Calgary is sort of a definite will beat the American and the Canadian lady. And Wakaba probably is sort of, I, yeah. Yuma, Shoma, I would go by who's doing better in practice because we haven't seen them head to head. I would kind of determine that last minute. If it's me, I tend to think TV, you don't have Daisuke here. That makes me think that Shoma with his history just gets like a little bit of a nudge. And may, and may step it up in the biggest of moments. He also is gonna get higher components at this yeah. point for performance. But I don't know. And I Yuma do, has I, shown normal kinds of nerves at times. And this will also, be- Also, it doesn't matter. Listen. Event. Adelina Sotnikova was not in the team event in 2014 and she won the gold medal at the Olympics. Right. I think Yuma could still win the gold medal at the Olympics and not be in the team event. Right. I think it's very possible. Yeah. But I do, okay, let's go through this. Okay. COVID, Russia situation, Kolyada out. Bazin really freaking everyone out. He had tested positive. Now he posted a picture today. Obviously, we don't know if his picture at the training camp was old from before or from now. The Russian social media post from Kazniarsk, I mean, we are just spinning up a fury, right? Then they originally told us that Danny G was at the camp. There was a kind of like a, almost like the way articles were written, it almost seemed like he wasn't. My understanding is Danny G was at the camp. The other indication of why he was at the camp, Akatieva and Petrosian were there. They got to train with the Olympic team. That shows that Terry's power, and they didn't. She didn't feel that the coaches at home were as strong to prepare them. So remember, Petrosian did not lock in her spot at Junior Worlds, but she did. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they are training her. That means that she is very much in Team Russia's priority list for the World Junior Figure Skating Championships. That says one thing about what we were talking about in the show last week about whether or not she would be there. Yeah. And that's, that means that they don't think Surskaya is capable of prepping like a Danny G. And why wouldn't Danny, the other thing is here, think about it this way. What's the only reason Danny G wouldn't have been at that camp if the juniors who were just at the junior nationals are at the camp? Right. COVID. Right. And what? everyone looked under the weather at, at junior nationals. Everyone. The skaters did, the coaches did, everyone looked like it. had so like, much stress. Could you imagine dealing with a Terry before the Olympics? I mean, yeah. Plushenka was just in the hospital with an ulcer. How many ulcers do you think Danny G has? Okay. I think Danny G is too confident to get ulcers. Look at how much Danny G has aged since 2016. Okay, yeah. with the amount of stress on that man. Okay. Yeah. 
that's just. So, but what was fascinating to me is we heard all these reports. Daniil has a um, Kogan, Kagan. Uh, what, who? Alexander Kogan, yeah. Kogan. Kagan, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also has it. Uh, but yet then suddenly there's flashback, no, it's all a lie? Or they're just saying, oh, it's negative or false positives? False positives. Russia has an epidemic of false positive tests. You could just decide that and nobody but cares? This is Russia. No, I know, but like at what point does, does the Olympic part sort of like need to verify that information? Uh, when you land in Beijing, that test better be freaking negative, okay? Okay, okay. I know that they there are, have, yeah, there's they, some school of thought that people think, well, Russia and China are allies. Maybe they will help them. Other people say, uh-uh, there is so much backlash against Beijing for these Olympics and people still call it the China virus in some uh, places. Aspect that, places, yeah. Yes, but that is a thing. And they are aware of this, that they are gonna be extra tough about COVID. Mm. Even if you're Russia. I don't know. I'm waiting to see who get. I think they fly February 1st. I'm waiting. Okay. That's the thing is like, at what point are you just trying to get yourself there? But what point are you sort of also aware of the liability of you getting on that plane? We trust me, the Federation would rather have Danny G sit at home than the three girls arrive you know how, positive. You tests. know how important the three girls are to like nationalism, state right. propaganda? Notice that we didn't see them training in the training video with the rest of the Russian team. I believe mm -hmm. they may even be on like sequestered ice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and then it was then these articles were coming out saying that two of them at least. I, I thought the article had said three, but we're hearing it may only be two were not vaccinated, but because they were under age, they were exempt from having to do it and then ultimately exempt from having to do the quarantine once they were there, yeah. right? Because that was the other question is people were the like- The quarantine well, when they're there is trickier. That I mean, if it's a six hour thing, it's, it's all a little murky. There is belief that maybe one of the girls is vaccinated. And yeah. that that's just, but if you remember in certain, you know, vaccine isn't as popular in certain areas and, reasons why people would, wouldn't be vaccinated. So I don't know, it's, to me, it's so, it's so messy talking about which person is I know, all, all the different, I know. And it's all it these like, really different concepts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so. And which vaccine did you get, right? right? So, right. And then people will be like, well, they're minors. Well, they're going into a bubble with people who are of age and all other Olympians. So actually, if they are vaccinated, it's not just a HIPAA thing, it is kind of everyone's public health risk. So yeah. It's tough. It's tough. It's, it's tough. really tough to, yeah. But uh, let's discuss two big narratives here that I think um, we're going to discuss is the redemption. And I think there are two main entries, actually three entries here that make this a really juicy and delicious Olympics because we are seeing three entries actually who are kind of redoing their last Olympics. Nathan Chen, who was a favorite for gold four years ago and it did not go well. Sway and Han, uh, who were favorites for gold uh, and it did not go their way uh, four years ago. And Papadakis and Cizeron, who were favorites, co-favorites uh, for the gold four years ago and it did not go their way. How many of them do you think will pull off the gold based on what we have, not just based on the fields here, but based on what history has told us about people who have redeemed themselves at the Olympics? I mean, even going, especially for singles, I'm trying to think of one of the times the Olympics just kind of went according to plan. Lushenka. So few, so few though. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, um, usually there is some sort of shocking moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last Olympics, of course, the shocking moment was that Nathan wasn't even on the podium. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't even who won, but like the absence of someone. So like that Ermanov article that came out 
when he was like, yeah, 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 you're, you're talking to me about like the history of the seasons and the history of what's been going on. He's like, basically all bets are off that night. And it's just- What do you think was supposed to happen in 94? Kurt, I thought it, I anticipated a Kurt, Victor, Brian podium. I think they like, were supposed to win. Yeah. I, I would think there was, Victor was in the mix, but also Kurt, Victor Kurt was, was very much going to be on that podium. Yeah. But Kurt wasn't doing his best that season. Yeah. And he did win 93 Worlds with fewer triples. Right. I tend to think it was going to go Victor. Hmm. Until whatever, and we didn't know because we didn't, they didn't make a drama about it on US TV. But until he said it in the interview, and I went back and watched, and the fact that the skater before him had a blade collapse on the ice like Tanya Harding, and he was whooshed out like Jose Schwinard, and US TV never showed that. And he had won right. every freaking competition with all those sixes at Europeans. Right. Like Armanov was like no one, right? Like relatively, you know, obviously people knew who he was. Um, I right. think, I think it was supposed to go Victor. And I think the politics would have gone Victor. Yeah. Uh, more important. Yeah. Yeah. I believe my coach had that sewn up. All right. I'm just saying, I cannot prove it. I have never asked her. I would like to live. I believe that she did her job before the Olympics. <laughs> well, and like you're saying, like you're saying, if we were doing this show before 94, we would be looking at a season where Victor was undefeated. How many close victories did Oksana win? When it counted. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> For real, I thought I rewatched that Tanya and Nancy documentary because it showed up in Peacock. And of course, there was that moment when they're finally making them talk about Oksana. And Nancy was like, well, she did have quick feet. And then Tanya said, yeah, she had nice jumps, not big like mine or anything, but they were pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. Yeah. I think something, I think something shocking might happen in the men. I think the shocking could happen anywhere. I do worry about the pressure on anyone trying to turn a silver medal at the Olympics into gold. And we, the reason I'm gonna give three examples. Brian Orser, a little bit tight in Calgary. Michelle Kwan, mistakes in Salt Lake City, tight. Elena and Anton, great short program, tight free in Salt yeah. Lake City. Yeah, that's not been who deserves to have scored what. I'm just talking about the actual performance. Mao, Mao. Do, I, I, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that's a really, a really great one. one. Great example. You could say you could say Elvis, but Elvis sort of just does what Elvis does. You know what well, I mean? Well, Elvis was injured coming back. Yeah, but think yeah. about it. Did his injury come from overtraining? You know, how did he tear? I mean, could his injury have happened? We'll never know. Did it just happen? As opposed to someone like a Patrick who going into the next Olympics sort of knew that that wasn't in the cards, but he was going for the team anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just worry that three of the, you know, three very beloved skaters uh, are going for the gold medal. I, I think, think it's probably hardest for Sway and Han, don't you think? Because they have three very, very strong candidates in the way. This is why I'm nervous for Sway and Misha and Galyamov are so consistent and they've got Tamara Moscovina prepping them and they have Russian politics behind them. They have been so consistent this season and getting the momentum and also with each result they get, whether or not they deserve to be the highest of components or second in components or third, in, when you win, people start seeing you as a champion and your components start to rise. And right. that's without politics, right? That's just human nature and consistency. So for Sway and Han, they haven't had wildly different programs over the last several years. So one coach said to me, we think of Sway and Han as so far above everyone and they are indeed extremely special. But they said, had Aliona and Bruno stuck together and been in it, or at least come back last year and this year, like Contessa and Scott, we would feel that Sway and Han were more on par, perhaps with Aliona and Bruno, and that there wasn't as big of a, a separation. Right, I agree. I think that was an interesting argument. Um, Sway and Han are going for the quad twist, which is great. 
It gives them an advantage. It helps the buffer of the Mishnah Galiamov uh, Salko or the Salko situation. I do worry about the side by side jumps at the end of the day. Just like and always. At Worlds, yeah. at Worlds last year, the judges didn't go with them in the components. Now, maybe the judges will feel opposite about how the result went last year and correct themselves. Or we're seeing that maybe that last year has fallen. I don't know. It's a ton of pressure on home ice. It could be in a home crowd. It either boosts you or paralyzes you one way or another. I mean, of course, no, or no crowd. I, I mean, yes. I, I would imagine- Being on home that, ice, you're going to feel that one way or and, another. But Misha and Galyamov, you know, they, they relied on the crowd. For we are the champions okay. for sure. They rely on the crowd. So, yes. so it will be intriguing who works with well, there wasn't any crowd at world when they did we are the champions remember there was no crowd and they won was that a no crowd world was a world's no crowd i would believe you either way at this point it's all a dizzy blur it's all a blur okay. for me but i believe it was no crowd people have a million okay. comments here. don't worry they just handle okay it. Uh, <laughs> oh. no yeah because again in in a no crowd situation some of the more performative skaters may lose an edge on getting the crowd behind them and some of the skaters that are just making beautiful pictures may thrive. I don't know. How about Papa Dante and Cicerone? Oh. It's a tough call. I mean, again, they won the free dance at the last Olympics, which tells me like, I, I think they're going to be fine, but I almost don't want to say that because I know who's gunning for them. You know, to the, me, the again, Russians are kind of, yeah. I, think I think they have solidified silver because really, in my opinion, their skating and their material puts them in bronze medal competition with everyone. But the, by by pretending they're gold medal threats, I think they've just locked in the silver. And I think silver is a big get for that team and that material this season. I believe the panel of judges is favorable to them tech panel it looks like miss helena may be the controller uh and everyone's knowing... talking about this is the same panel from sochi right the te the same uh, technical panel. but i don't know the, what i see the only thing that scares me about papadakis and scissor is that coming into the olympic season in last season and the season before, they've just seemed to be running on fumes. And I do believe the Olympics favors he who has energy and motivation and momentum. That being said, if Snitz and Katsalapov are scored through the roof in the team event, and they do both, and they are Olympic champions, I do worry about momentum. I'm not saying I think it's going to happen because Nikita doing four sets of twizzles cleanly is like, but I'm saying it's within the realm of chance that Papadakis' run could have an error. We did see them have a bit of an error uh, at, but we didn't see them have an error at French nationals. Right. I don't love their free dance. I believe that they are vastly superior um, to the Russians and could probably have an error and maybe still win. But I, I don't feel, I wouldn't bet my house on it, you know, but I do think that they are likely going to win the medal. I think most likely- yeah, The strategy here seems to be to, to have disappeared, to have stepped back to keep that intrigue going and arguably mm -hmm. to keep them fresh. Like it is- And keep them safe from COVID. I think kind of, yeah. I, I'm really intrigued if their philosophy of let's, let's almost fade away so we can search back um, will pay off for them. I'm trying to remember if they're one of the teams that comes out of the gate really strong in a normal season or if they needed some time to build. I've I mean, seen it go a myriad they're of ways. Slow, so okay. slow for them is still so vastly ahead of so many other teams. So it's hard to right. say, right? right? And we're so wowed when we see them. I, I tend to think that they're prepared and experienced enough to do this. I think they have enough. I think that their lead is enough. I don't know if they could actually handle it if they were against Virtue and Moyer, who have like 
professionals at delivering at the Olympics, or if they were against Davis and White, I would not feel as good about this. But I think against Vicky and Nikki, I feel okay. Well, I and I feel, feel Vicky and Nikki thrive on performance energy and like kind of a bit more in your face presentation with the subtlety of the French program could work without an audience. I think the fact that they have such a scoring advantage is what's gonna carry them. Yeah. But I don't know that they have the kind of momentum that they had four years ago. Yes, I think, I think there is no momentum. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad momentum, but it's just kind of a vague question mark situation yeah. at the moment. Yeah. The momentum that again, we lost from not having a Grand Prix final is where bronze goes, Siri. What do you I think? I have no idea how this could fall, you know, shake out because I could see any one of those North American teams doing that. Although the scores from Europeans tell us Buchan thinks he's going to try to make a run for it too. I think the head Marie France judge is on the panel. Let's um, double check that would be Mr. David Molina. <laughs> I know we're not supposed to say that, but he's the French judge. Let's be honest. Okay. Um, he is on the panel. Listen, I think Marie France will get a bronze medal at these Olympics. And I, I God says it's gonna be Chuck and Bates. And I, I don't know why that is. Is it because they the won nationals? Because again, even the win at nationals, when there's a win, but they didn't win the big program, I think I the jury's still out on it. I just think, do you trust Hubble and Donahue at the Olympics? Without an audience, maybe. Because if if what if what creates the mistake, I think they're the better skater. Distraction and excitement. It's going to be a little less, you know, frenzied. The energy in that building without all those people, and maybe without that frenzy. That's what I always thought about Keegan's free skate this season. Without the frenzy of the crowd, they may be able to settle in a little bit more. Is it the I frenzy or is it that they're both alphas? Mm. So they're both kind of aggressors, it, like sort yes. of in this. Yeah, what needs to happen is like almost like a step back, like a settled in kind of energy is what I would love for them. That would tell me, again, whether we're talking about the result or not, when Jamie and David took the ice in Salt Lake City, I saw two competitors that were the most settled before they started skating. You knew they were gonna be fine. If I could sense that, settling from Hull and Donahue, I know they're gonna be fine, but I don't sense it very often, but maybe without the crowd, it'll help. But she also was so upset at nationals and maybe that just fuels them to do whatever they need to do to. But also if you have something fueling you, that again goes to the idea of aggressive and I don't think that's what they're in need of in order to secure but this But maybe it's in the training to come together and do this. So if that can inspire you to make that last change, it's not like they're far off. I don't know. I, I really see it go any of the three ways. Oh my God, the lift with the bent arms, could it be straight arm? I mean, there's just so many yeah. things shown over the last moment. Yeah, it's gonna, that's one of the most intriguing battles of the entire Olympics for me, is that bronze medal in the dance. You know what, I just really liked Chalk and Bates' lifts and the musicality. At, National and we know the general look is one that the Europeans will get behind. Of the North American peers, I think those European judges like the chalk and Bates overall aesthetic the most. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know. Same. I watched on edge. You watched on edge. Chalk and Bates yeah. just seem like the easier team. Mm. Easier. I didn't say better. I said easier. Yeah. <laughs> now, I think most judges could agree on them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, even if they may like the Canadians the most, they would have Chalk and Bates second. Or if they liked Hubble and Donahue, they would still go with a Chalk and Bates. Like, I think Chalk and Bates becomes the most agreeable of those three teams probably for the average person. I do think Canada having only Piper and Paul to bet on for a medal, 
at these Olympics favors them in a sense, but I think the judges may favor actually the Montreal teams. So mm. we'll see. If Canada all of a yeah. sudden got really great at deal making, I would go for the tech panel. That's what I'm saying. Go for the tech <laughs> The answer may lie in the tech panel. Yeah. Again, because right. all three had an opportunity if they had the right repertoire, but they all kind of took a swing and a miss. What do you think for the ladies' podium? I think I think the Valier was a no-brain. I think, yep. but again, we have thought that about a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. But if all goes according to plan, I, I think that's pretty unshakable. The real wild card comes into Anna's quad attempt, which even done unsuccessfully has proven to get her good scores. It's just, is Trusif gonna make it impossible? Because when we went back and we judged Pyeongchang, I did not anticipate having Nathan first in my judging of mm -hmm. the free skate. But with that technical content, or even when we did the ladies with Zagita's, Zagitava's sort of, uh, you know, back loading it, it just made it logistically impossible. So if she has enough, close enough landings, I don't know it's possible with PCS to make up the difference. I see Trusova as second. I had it. I wrote it down just to scratch and just was going with a gut. I went Valjeva, Sherbakova, Trusova. I think that's probably the more common. Kauri. Yeah, I agree. Wakaba. Un Luna. To be seen. Really? Okay. Yi Lim. Um, then I put USA. What, what spot is, what, are we seventh or eighth now? Eighth? Or eighth now. Depending Should on have... Young Yu's triple axle. Yeah. And then I put it, I put Young Yu under. So I have Korea sandwiching the US ladies. I predict. I predict that this is gonna be one of the worst Olympics for the US ladies, potentially. Even though the last Olympics were not kind to the US ladies individually. Because Mariah's triple axel kind of overshadowed that. Yes, and a nice teen moment, which we may get this time too. We may have a nice teen moment to to ignore what's about to happen next in the ladies, yeah. But I think after these Olympics, I think it's gonna look at that Sochi was actually like fantastic for the Sochi, US we Olympics. had three in the top 10, one was fourth. Like, based on what we've medal. seen from the US ladies and what we are currently seeing from the juniors from Japan and Korea and Russia, I don't think it goes up here for Team USA in four years. No, we only have one junior lady that can land quads and we're trying desperately to hold her down right now. So, well, I. Yes, I, I see Korea besting us. And I see Belgium besting us and I see all of Japan besting. Us. I mean, Monica Wabe, she could, she could also, if she decides to land both triple axles, like it's just a decision, if she does that, I see her placing above the American women. I think you also have to look at Poland placing ahead of American ladies. Is Grubanova going? Oh, man. That's like... Because if yeah, she's going, then we're, it's another... Yeah, she's going. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's another person that could fit right in there. Yeah. So I believe it's possible. Even Azerbaijan. Ryabova sometimes accidentally scores high in a moment. I, so I think it could go any which way for the US ladies. They could also feel no pressure to be at the Olympics and skate so well. They could potentially go eight, nine, ten. I see they more could like eight, nine, a, ten. They 10, could 11, go 12. six, seven, eight. <laughs> they could go. 11 12 16 you know like yeah it's, yeah oh who knows okay. it could go any which way and again the international judges don't feel the need to help Alyssa or mariah for sure i don't think they feel the need to help any of them yeah i think mariah bell will actually probably skate up here I hope so. Well. It's, I, I hope they all do really well. It would be great moments. But even, even at their skate. finest, they have I think um, Karen may up for her. 
I don't know about Alyssa. I don't know. We all have to see. She could skate up. We. Do, I just. But are the judges going to give Alyssa the points that they once gave her as the up and coming bright talent, or are they going to give her the points of the fallen talent? That's what I think. Because I, I think some PCS were starting to come back because there, Jeremy and Massimo gave her some like deceptive programs that helped and like they were really focusing on stuff. It was clear already at, from the short program at nationals that the light was off and sort of the finesse was gone. Now maybe she was already feeling ill or it was just adjusting, I don't know, but that, that even gave permission to lower the PCS more, that kind of skating, so. I went international judge and I was looking at who skated four continents and watch the look they have youtube they can watch these things watch the it's going to be the surprise ones it's going to be a young you a monica wabe a learner uh yalem that will surprisingly i think lower our results mm -hmm. yeah i think poland may skate very well so yeah uh, yeah. yeah if she's riding that, that tremendous wave of goodwill from from europeans Europeans, Nebelhorn, yeah. It's been I didn't year. quite find it the moment other people did at Europeans. Like they really had a moment about her. And I, it's always She's nice to see happy. someone do well. It's nice to see someone enjoy the sport. Um, but yeah, I was sort of shocked at how much fan love was ready for her. Well, Jonathan, there's a lot of people who I think are tired of Russia dominating all the time. So I think sometimes when there's extra or one camp specifically. It was just something different, a breath of fresh air. Yeah. I think that when there's extra love behind Tuktamish, or extra love behind Korkova, or extra love behind Gubanova, you're like, well, are they as good as like the Twitter is saying them? I think in those spheres, people get tired of Team Two yeah. Breeds of winning everything. So I think it just represents something underdog. different. It represents, yeah. yeah, an underdog, something different. So I think yeah. that that is why, but I don't know that the judges necessarily share that but i think that there's always the benefit of someone different i believe yeah. that russia has put all of its political capital behind the ladies event and i believe that they have done just about everything <laughs> to do to sweep the podium that they can and i and, think they're fine yeah i think everything is in place for that to happen although i you know with the exception of midori back in 92 because that was a real wild card but we we have foolishly thought the same in 92 and oh my gosh even more foolishly thought it in 98. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Christy nailed those nationals, baby. She was very competitive and yeah. a world champion. So how about the men? Okay. What does your gut say about the chances of the men? I don't know. This one is like sort of the most interesting because there's a lot of really well-matched guys. The Shoma situation, it's going to be really intriguing how Shoma shows up training here. Like, we have seen uh, Lambiel sort of focus Shoma more than we've used to in the past, but Shoma really did show up at the last Olympics ready to go. So I'm intrigued how Lambiel and him are approaching these Olympics. Again, that was another silver situation last year that I don't know they think is turning into a gold. And of course, Lambiel struggled with that himself. <laughs> like, I don't know this, it could mirror Lambiel and he could have the silver last time and he could end up fourth here. I don't, I don't know. Yuma, I think the stage is set for Yuma to do very well, but Yuma showed it, it might get to him. I don't know. If, the Olympics if, can favor the young. We have seen that. Yeah, or the naive. I loved when Sandra would say that because it, it goes inside. You think Yuma carries what these other guys are carrying? I don't think so. You know, he's just there to have a good time and do well. I don't, if you, I agree with you very much on the quad axle. If, how you let go of the quad axle, I would think to myself, he's in the zone. He's going to do it. He you think he watched really US it. Nationals? I think he knows exactly what happened. Whether he watched them or not is another story. Um, and it's no secret. I think the judges prefer, you know, Hanyu's will say differently. I think the judges do prefer Hanyu's skating. But again, it's just going to be a numbers game with that technical inequality, I think. I don't, I don't see, if I'm being honest, I don't see the GOE in Nathan's material like I should see in Hanyu's, but Hanyu does reduced material. So now we're back to that age old question. 
I know I can't predict the men. I actually cannot predict no. the men. I can see it going three ways. If you were if you were Nathan, are you trying the Lutz and the flip in the short program? Yes. Because you have to. I want to put it out of reach for as much as possible. Base, but if practice isn't going well, then no. But I want to theoretically put everything possible that yeah, I can which do I think was the intention last time. But like you're saying, we had not seen it going successfully. We have seen more successful iterations of that attempt this season, but still kind of perhaps different. he hasn't competed much this season. I think you have to go based on practice and the body and how he's doing and how he's yeah. feeling and what the stress level is. And I think you have to be really honest with yourself. Yeah. Same with um, Vincent. I. You know, it's interesting because Vincent was so unstoppable until now we're back to world's Vincent sort of attitude, I think. Like everyone's like, oh, well, he's so inconsistent. And he's like, well, no, but they were just at a couple of high profile moments. And unfortunately his last two outings gave us questions. But again- his what, warm up was so bad at US Nationals before the free and then the free was a disaster. So. But his short Which, was fantastic. So, so that's when you're like, what's going on with the head game here? I don't believe that Vincent is set up momentum wise to win an individual medal without mistakes from others. Meaning but I could see him up. in the final group. Yes, I see him in the final group. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Unless we have like a repeat of something, right? But um, I just wonder if you're the coach, how... How do you capture the magic that you clearly captured at the start of the fall? And he, had, he was so desperate to prove something and potentially after nationals that, that motivation may be back. Well, I think for Vincent, you have to hope that the team event, I, if I were the coach, I would focus his mental energy on the team event. Let's say they put him in the team event and he does well, I'd be like, Vincent, you got it. If he does the team event and does poorly, Vincent, this is your redemption, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, you make it a strength. If Jason goes in the team event, but you, show him who should have been there. Show him who's boss, right? Like yeah. that's what you do. Okay. If you put him in the team event and it just goes average, first pancake, you've got it. But I would actually- Yeah, exactly. Just getting your feet wet. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. But I, I yeah. I, for my last spot in the final group, who do you think, let's say that Nathan, Yuzu, Yuma, Shoma, and Vincent get in the final group. Who's your number six? So this is interesting. It could help because I don't know that Italy will make the finals of that team event, right? It, I think it's, you know, they have a decently well-rounded team, but not enough to make finals, I think. So for all we know, it could be a Daniel Grassl that sneaks I, in there with a strong short. Yeah, so Daniel Grassel would be one of the ones to consider. Um, now, Jason could score well in the short. He really could. Jin Boyang could, but he's gonna have to land everything in the short. We've seen some ginormous quadruple lutzes. Oh my gosh, can we take a moment to talk about the ill-advised um, Peacock Premium previews for everyone? No, I didn't see. Did you see, see, Dave? It was amazing. These like little yearbook headshots for everyone, and then a series of outrageously wrong facts underneath. It said Mariah Bell won the 2022 World Championships. It says Nathan is the only man who's ever landed a quadruple lutz at the Olympics. It said like Jason is representing South Africa. I don't know what it was, but like they were getting more and more wild. But I only say it because obviously Boyang Jin has also landed a quadruple lutz at the Olympics. It, it could be a boy, boy and Jin. I'm seeing it as Daniel. Who were you seeing it as? Wild card Junwa Cha. Oh, of course, Junwa Cha. With one quad in the short, but a lovely sow when it's done well. I love the material in his short program. It's coming off a great four continents. Why is that's a good yeah? I would love for it to be Junwa. I see the numbers if if Daniel does it, it could be Daniel. But I would much I would love to see Dan or um Junwa in that final group. I would have said Adam. No, I'm lying. Kevin. 
uh, from France. But obviously, so. this has been such a such a miss of a season for him. I could also see Jun Cha finishing in the top six, but being like seventh or eighth after the short. Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, basically with the one quad, he's really... I believe he's stronger in the free than the short. So, yeah. I think Daniel Grasso, the longer you watch him skate, like Bo Yangjin, the worse it gets for him. Yeah, yeah. In that case, maybe Jason with a clean short could get in sixth. I think but those are the right. ones I think I'm looking at. Yeah. But what if Roman Sadovsky makes the final group? Oh my God, that would be hilarious. Oh my God, like that would be. He has the ability to with that beautiful short program. And, and when his sow is on, it is a gorgeous quad sow, but that's a big ask for him. We've I don't know that the politics are on his side coming in here. No, almost certainly not. Barely from his own federation. Uh, Barely national, from his own so federation, the, the rest of the world. I don't know that he's done well enough throughout the year to be judged high enough. Yeah. How about dance? What are we? I think dance, we've talked about it. I think the top six are the top six and it'll yeah. be whatever the cookie crumbles. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That, that one, again, I'm very intrigued by. And pair uh, airs. I, I, I want to see how high will Diana Davis place with smart oh, yeah, Diaz, the candidates, why I can baker. I think there's uh, fear and Gibson. I think there's a little competition in that uh, outside of the top six to kind of who's going to get in the top 10. I think that's interesting, but. Yeah, because your top six are two Americans, two Russians, um, the French and the Canadian. Yeah, because I, the Italians will be knocking on the door. Uh, mm -hmm. The Italians will have their sights set on Buchan, I would think, but, mm -hmm. but it's it kind of distant after that Europeans. Um, but yeah, pairs, pairs will be interesting out of top four. Are we assuming that Peng and Jin are fifth? Do we think the Japanese are going to make this huge surge here? It's interesting, based on just a couple of competitions early on, and knowing that like Megan and Bruno are like the magic preparers, I just, we put a lot of faith in their ability to pull this off. Like I've really elevated them in my head. They are now creating a team medal for Japan. They are now absolutely in this sort of like upper echelon at a time when I considered them maybe even, even if a notch below the other North American pairs. Oh, I think they're above I, North American pairs. I now. see them finishing above them. Yeah, but they have to deliver and that's a big ask for this team. But I, I, I really hope they can do it because I think they We can. haven't seen them in a while. That's yeah, the, that's what I mean. I want them, I want this for them, but it's gonna be a lot of pressure. So a lot of pressure for everyone. You know, I mean. Yeah. You exactly. are afraid of the wolf, don't go into the forest, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, pairs, yeah. Out with Sway and Han, they're going to make us sweat and wait for it until the very end. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm looking forward I, to it. I'm ready. To, see, to, to now justify all these choices. That's the other thing. These federations are, you know, hoping they played it right. We're gonna I think Tarasa Moore is about the bronze. That's what I kind of think. But. Interesting. And Boykova's gotten the, the boot? I think so. Maybe? Yeah, it could be possible. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm rooting for the Chinese. I have a feeling they may grab another silver. But we'll see. We'll see. It could, it yeah. could motivate them. Hail Mary, last minute. Listen, it happened for Aliona four years ago. Yes, like it did. Yeah. Anything is possible. Um, except, what was your moment of the week? Did you have a moment of the week of your excitement seeing those peacocks? Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, hmm. I do love the idea that you can just get a COVID test and say, no, don't worry about it. It's a joke. That, that part of the Danny G story, I was like, wow, really an insight as to how um, invincible you must feel. <laughs> I mean, yeah, terrible news about Kolya Da, but I, I hope that for every tragic story that happens, that is going to happen this way, that at least I hope Semenenko is feeling over the moon that he gets to go unexpected. So. Um, my moment um, was Nikita Katsalapov uh, posting that they're wearing masks and uh, using hand sanitizer in the bubble oh, across the yard before going to an Olympics. He's got a and really good idea, yeah. Before, you know, before, uh, in Olympics that many people don't think should be happening. Um, that he was, you know, wanted, you know, to really 
you know, celebrate that, you know, how yeah. vigilant they're being after we've watched two years of uh, Russian national competitions where no one uh, wore a mask, in my opinion. And then yelling, back. yelling at other, uh, yeah. you know, other countries that they should take their masks off too. But yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. realize he knows about Purell. Now he's fine. Yeah. That moment of the week, an entire country without any self-awareness. Like, I, it's just <laughs> incredible. It's incredible. They don't get why people don't, why people are anti-Russians. Yes, it's obviously that they're afraid. It's not about the arrogance or no. the manipulation or the gaslighting or the cheating or anything else. Oh or the lack God. of hand sanitizer up until this moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, the edge looks sexy, everyone. But, uh...